Greetings viewer, Eric the Car Guy here. I'm in the middle of a used car inspection on this 97 Subaru Legacy, and I noticed that uh, the rear brakes don't look like they're operating properly. Uh, many times I recommend this to people, and I usually refer them to my brake replacement video, but luckily uh, with this one we have the opportunity to show a real world scenario where we've got a lot of rust on the outside of the rotor itself, but plenty of brake pad material. So that to me says that probably the caliper is not able to move properly. So I'm gonna go through the process of freeing up the caliper and lubricating everything to make sure that it moves like it should. Now, this does not address the rusty rotor. For that, the rotor would either have to be machined or replaced depending upon how much material is left on it. But for the purposes of today's video, I'm just gonna go through the process of making the caliper work as it should again. Okay, step one, I want to remove the caliper um, from its bracket assembly and for this particular style I need a 12 millimeter wrench um, And this one's on there pretty good You can also use a ratchet to do this with And already I'm seeing that my suspicions are correct about this We don't need to pull this all the way out because this whole caliper assembly will swing up. So I have a small pry bar here. I'm going to insert into the back, pop that up, and I can get my fastener out that way. Uh, then I can just slide it off of this upper peg just by moving it to the side. Now this is the guy that I suspect, yeah, it didn't want to move initially. Now it does. But I'm thinking these brake pads are also in here pretty good. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to pry these brake pads out. And actually I think that's what the issue is, is the brake pads themselves have rusted up in this area here. So I'm just going to insert my pry bar in between and try to... I am actually have to get a hammer. Yeah, that's the issue right there. The brake pads themselves are pretty much rusted into place. So we'll get those out and clean those up. I'm gonna go grab a hammer. All right, I get yelled at when I don't show proper use of tools, so I don't wanna hit on my pry bar. I'm actually gonna use this drift punch. It's a bit long for this side. Okay, so I need a shorter drift punch. Let's try this again. Okay, now you see why all that force from that caliper was being lost. Use a pry bar, get the rest of the way. Okay, now we got some rusty brake pads to deal with. Uh, I'm gonna take these over to my grinding wheel and I'm going to uh, try to remove some of this rust. Uh, I'm also gonna take these shims off in this case since that's not that difficult. And I'm gonna clean those up also. Uh, keep an eye on these. These look like they're the same top and bottom. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna be an issue, but sometimes these might be uh, made for a particular side. So watch out for that. Now to the grinding wheel. Okay, now over at the grinding wheel, I'm gonna take these brake pads and these shims and I'm gonna to try to clean them up. Especially in the area where the pad lives. Here's a comparison. Before and after. Now be careful doing this because this could go flying out of here. So don't try to push on it too hard. Much better. Now for the brake pads. Now it's this area in here that seems to have rusted up the most and it's pinching this in here so that it can't move. So I'm gonna try to clean the rust out of this area as much as I can. And here's your before and after. After, before. 
Okay, well that looks a lot better than before. So let's head back over to the car. Now experience has taught me in a situation like this that if you just put these shims over the top of the old bracket, there might still be a problem. So it's probably an even better idea to remove this bracket and also clean the surface that these shims go onto. rusty things and impacting action similar to what I'm showing here I find to be the best method and you might want to make sure that they're both going to come out before you take one all the way out because you could make it so the thing starts flopping all over the place just two. These are 14 millimeter by the way. Okay, now I don't have the means to machine this right now at the moment, but I just want the brakes to work again. But once again, I can't stress enough how um, this should be machined or replaced. But for now, let's take this bracket over to the wire wheel and do the same thing that we did to the shims. Same drill here, but this time I'm trying to clean this stuff and what I can't reach, I'm gonna use a hand um, wire brush with. All right, that looks a lot better. And by the way, for those of you that might be wondering, I am wearing my safety glasses. That's how ETCG rolls. Before we install the bracket, might as well just clean off the pin. That actually looks really good. And I'm going to install my shims, which just sort of slip on like this. And then same with the other side. Just slip them in there. There you go. And now I can reinstall the bracket. Once again, I did not machine this rotor, but I should. Okay. All right. Now, before I put my lubrication on these brake pads, I'm going to fit them first. Just gonna stick them in here and see if they're still binding up. They're not. This outside one is still something of an issue. I may have to take some metal off of the pad. Still got some issues here. So what I'm probably gonna end up doing, and I've done this in the past, is I'm probably gonna go in here and try to grind out just a little bit of material just in this, this area here to open that up to make sure that it can move a little more smoothly. I'm just gonna do it to a little bit to the back one. All right, now I'd like to make short work of this. I'm not squeezing the heck out of this brake pad in this caliper, I'm, or in this vise, I'm just holding it in place. I'd like to make short work of this, so I've just got an angle die grinder here with a, an angle bit on it, and I'm just, like I said, I'm gonna come into here and I'm gonna try to widen this hole a little bit. The danger if you go too far is that the pad will make noise when you apply the brakes. So it could, you could have a click, but honestly I'd rather have a click than it not move. But if you're doing this on a customer's car, then you definitely want to be aware of making a click. Flip it over. And the reason I'm grinding the brake pad and not the caliper is because the brake pads get changed. So when this is done, it gets thrown away. So I'd rather modify something that's the throwaway rather than the part for the car. Okay, that should do it. 
I just checked this on the car and that hasn't quite done it all the way, so I'm just gonna grind a little bit off the ends of the pads also with a stone. Okay, and I'm also noticing that these shims, once I get the inside pad in, which is moving fine now, once I get the inside pad in, it's not allowing this to go in all the way. So what, I, what I'm doing is I'm just sort of pulling down on the shim a little bit to get it past that. But once it's past that, it moves in there just fine. So now I know my pads are gonna be able to move freely and release and apply. So now I'm gonna put my lubricant on. My lubricant of choice is gonna be copper anti-seize uh, on this. And I'm going to apply it to the inside areas, every place that touches the actual caliper itself. And this will help prevent corrosion. And also up on these little areas here, because that is where these inside little tabs will come into contact with the pad. So any place that comes in contact with anything is what you want to lubricate. And this is what we end up with when we're done. Everything is coated with a little bit of anti-seize so that it can move freely inside the slides. That one just goes right on. This one now also just goes right on. So everything's moving like it's supposed to. Now for caliper pins, for me, it's silicone paste. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be this brand, but silicone paste is what you need to lubricate this with. And I'm also going to remove this upper slide just by pushing it through. Clean it up a little bit. And then I'm going to go along the inside of the bore, the rubber boot, and add some lubricant. Might get a little messy on the outside, but yeah. That's okay, we can clean that up. And you just push it back in, make sure the boot goes in there and can move freely. Clean up your excess, and you're a total professional. I'm also gonna do the same thing to this pin is also a slide. Once again, silicone lubricant is what you want to use here. And then just slide it on there. Bring this down. Probably not a bad idea to see if there's any gook or anything in here, but there isn't, so we're good. I don't put anything on the back of the pads or any kind of material there. I just use the shims on the backs of the pad that normally come with everything. I'll take just a little bit of anti-seize, and I mean just a little bit, and just put it on the threads of the bolt. Now, remember, we need to put the bolt in before that came all the way down. And then, there we go. You'll also notice I installed the pads correctly because the uh, indicator should be on the inner pad, not the outer one. So they got switched in the process. So some of you might have noticed that. But the indicator is that little metal tab. All right, it's all back together the way it should be and it should now be able to activate as it's supposed to. As always, I hope this information was helpful to you. So if you find yourself with a caliper, this happens a lot in the rear, especially. Uh, but if you find yourself with a brake rotor that's covered with rust, it could indicate that the uh, caliper is not moving as it should. So should you encounter that situation, this is at least how I deal with it. Anyway, I'm Eric the Car Guy. You can always visit me at ericthecarguy.com or you can find me on Facebook and Twitter and now on Google+. And around here I close with be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. Catch you next time.